most quite dissatisfied with what the supposed idea of success uh, within this industry. Uh, I joined PIL in 79, and when, by the time we got to early 85, we had a top five worldwide single. We did the soundtrack for Miami Vice. All of those things, you would go, wow, you have made it. You are successful. Right. And uh, it didn't feel like that at all. I was really unhappy. It felt like I'd arrived in somebody's butt hole. It was just awful. And I just quit. I'm like, screw this, you know. And uh, I started a construction company, wanted to get away from the music business entirely. I ended up starting Invisible Records. Um, worked with Kill and Jump for a while. Same story, different reasons. Um, and so Pig Face is about, it kind of grew out of the ministry tour in 1990. I wanted to do something other than recreate ministry songs with the stellar lineup of people that Al Jorgensen put together for that tour. Ogre, Chris Connolly, um, myself, Bill Rieflin, um, the guys from KMFDM. I'm like, I was looking around the stage every night going, well, what would happen if we decided to make our own music instead of being a ministry cover band? So that's what we did. And it's just kind of exploded from that basic theory. Just within a couple of days of starting Pigface, it just exploded. Albini was in the studio with us. David Yao from Jesus Lizard. Trent Reznor came out at a point when Nine Inch Nails had sold probably less than 10,000 albums. Um, all different people started jumping in the studio and uh, going crazy, and it's just been that way ever since. Think. Don't be poor. Be humble. Be religious. Salvation! Think very hard about your future and your life. Carefully write it down on a large piece of paper and flush it down the toilet. Hey.